Hi guys. Um, so uh, I'm Arnav. I uh, currently I work at uh, Zomato, and my work has uh, nothing to do with Vue.js. I work on the <laughs> mobile team at Zomato. Um, but uh, so that's why I start with uh, why I made plugins in a language that I don't use in my day-to-day -day job. Uh, so uh, let me show you a sample of a side project I'm building. So it's a website called ShareTime. Brought in, uh, it's it helps uh, me schedule uh, meetings with people in different time zones. And I needed a component that would update itself every second, like we have a timer kind of thing. And uh, I, I needed it in a lot of places inside that website. So uh, I built something like this. Uh, you have uh, a time object in the data. You have a method called update time. And there is something called timers. Now, if you have used uh, view before, you uh, know that there isn't a key called timers uh, inside the view instance by default. But that's what my plugin does. If you uh, add uh, a timer for update minutes with an interval of say 30 seconds, repeat it through every 30 seconds, that function is uh, going to run. And uh, in fact, uh, if you use TypeScript, it's even easier. You can annotate it with timer, set an interval, and it's going to run like this. Uh, so that's uh, uh, the first time I actually made a plugin for Vue itself. Uh, and I've used it in a couple of uh, websites since then. And uh, uh, then Eventually, so, uh, once I had to build, so um, I had founded a, a startup where we had an online ID and it has to save a, save a lot of things, last input, last output. It's like, you know, it's an ID, so it has to save a lot of stuff. It has to save something to local storage, something to local forage, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I wanted basically my entire Vuex uh, state to get saved to a storage and get restored when you open that website. So uh, for that, I built something called Vuex Persist, uh, which again, uh, my end goal was that it should be like only two, three lines to incorporate it and my Vuex store can get saved. Uh, it, using it is very simple. You just uh, construct an instance of it. Uh, you pass the storage to it. And as long as it is of the uh, storage data type, which is it has get item and set item functions inside it, you can pass such an object to it. And uh, when you create your Vuex store, you pass that on as a plugin and that's it. In fact, you don't even need to be using Vue with uh, Vue CLI. Even if you are using Vue just by uh, writing script SRC in your HTML file, you can still use this. Uh, so uh, this is something that actually got pretty popular after I released it. It has a lot of downloads, a lot of uh, projects on GitHub use it. And uh, so that's when I thought maybe I can give a talk about how to make plugins. Being an expert enough to say that. Uh, so start with the basics. Uh, so what are plugins? Uh, so in the world of view, when we uh, use the word uh, plugin, there are three kinds of things we mean and we should of course uh, differentiate be uh, between them. Uh, so there are view plugins, uh, which, uh, you know, adds functionality to uh, the view framework itself or to the view components. Uh, okay. Uh, then there are Vuex plugins. Now Vuex plugins, of course, uh, you can use only when you are using Vuex. And uh, what they can do is you can trigger certain things happening when the state your Vuex is changing. And uh, finally, there are Vue CLI plugins, which uh, has been uh, popular ever since Vue CLI 3.0 was released. So you can basically uh, create, you can add uh, support for new languages, basically the entire Vue CLI uh, build step where your project is compiled and bundled. You want to make any changes in that uh, pipeline, you can create a Vue CLI plugin for that. So I would not be speaking a lot about Vue CLI plugins because it's a very different kind of a thing. It's about how your project is compiled and not about how it is run. Uh, we are going to be discussing more about Vue and Vuex plugins. In fact, Vuex and Vue Router, uh, which I think most Vue projects use, themselves are also Vue plugins. So uh, how do you recognize what is a Vue plugin, what is a Vuex plugin? So when you, whenever you uh, see documentation which looks like this, that say an example plugin called Vue Boom, you import that and the documentation says that you write Vue.useBoom. So these kind of things are view plugins. Okay. Um, Vuex plugins, you would usually see the documentation which goes along the lines of this, that you import the plugin. And when you are constructing the store, you pass it into the array of plugins. Okay. And uh, view CLI plugins, usually you would find documentation which looks like this, that you uh, do view add, let's say a plugin called Crackle, or usually you install it uh, using NPM and then invoke it. Uh, it can run some code generation, it can add some uh, webpack steps and all of that stuff. So uh, what exactly can these plugins do? Uh, so what a view plugin can do is that it can 
add some uh, you know uh, global methods or properties to the view object itself okay uh, it can uh, add new directives filters or transitions so we have got a lot of transitions in view by default like slide in transitions and fade transitions exist if you want to add your own ones you can do that directives like v if v for you can add your own ones like that uh, and they are in fact uh, uh, you know uh, there are a lot of libraries out there which do uh, specifically these things uh, you can add uh, some uh, mixins so i think uh, last talk uh, there was some discussion about mixins so you want a particular mixin to be available to every view component in your project you can uh, put that mixin inside a plugin and put that plugin into view so that mixin is available on every view component okay and uh, finally you can uh, add things into view dot prototype which means those methods will become available to every instance uh, so uh, usually people do that with axios they put view dot prototype dot axios uh, equal to axios they do and then in every uh, instance of view you can use this dot axios it is a reference to axios uh, like that so those kind of things uh, that's usually what are things that uh, view plugin can do uh, so what a view x plugin can do it does really very sim one simple thing it can listen to uh, mutations uh, and when the mutation is triggered the view x plugin can decide to do, do something like save the uh, state into local storage like uh, my plugin does or you might want to trigger a new mutation or you might uh, you know want to uh, valid validate the user token uh, every second so you can do that when the state is changing like that okay and uh, view cli plugins like i said they can uh, add new webpack plugins into your build structure they can add resolve configs and they can add or modify the order of tasks in which uh, your project is getting uh, built and uh, they can also have uh, transformers which can transform your code so if you install the view typescript plugin into a vue.js project your existing javascript code gets transformed into typescript code Th uh, those kind of things also do by that so uh, let's take a look at how do we build view uh, plugins so first of all uh, we need to you know answer these questions which of these things we need do we need global methods or properties do we need filters transitions or directives do we need any global mixin or do uh, we need any instance methods so the plugin usually uh, looks like this you export your plugin from your npm module it sh is supposed to contain an install function that install function uh, is going to get run when the view.use line is getting run and at that stage you have uh, the access to the view object and with which you can do these things you can add a global function like this to uh, view itself okay you can uh, add uh, some directives or uh, filters into view now these are things that you can do at every component level also but if you do it here it's available across your entire application right uh fine and then if you want to add a mix in so you can add a mix in like this and there's a created function so this created function will get run for every component inside your entire app and uh, you can use uh you can use the prototype to inject that's like that. there's a shorthand syntax that exists if the npm module that you're building uh contains only the plugin and nothing else sometimes you might be exporting the view plugin plus some other things so in that case you can add those things into the my plugin object apart from the install function but if the install function is the only thing that you want to export then you can just export that function itself the syntax also works if the module is a function then view treats it as the install function uh, itself you can directly write stuff like this uh, we will actually uh, build a view uh, but for that let's take a look at how vuex plugins are built and we will build both of them so when you build a vuex plugin these are the things that you need to think about uh, what do you want to do when a mutation occurs and uh, do you want to you know do different things for different kinds of mutations and uh, do you want to commit another mutation when one mutation happens and it's very important to escape the recursive cycle you might end up because the mutation that you will run will trigger your plugin getting run once again so you need to figure those things out so everybody who has used uh, vuex would have a basic idea about this website. so your uh, component can dispatch actions actions can do asynchronous stuff like talk to the api then they can commit a mutation mutations are the only place where you can change the state and when the state changes there might be some re-render that's happening on the component one directional flow of data what uh, in this uh, green box the only place where our plugin can hook into this life cycle is at the mutation level that's where uh, we can uh, do anything so the plugins you write like this uh, you can subscribe to mutations when you subscribe you get this function uh, which has the mutation in the state uh, what happens is that uh, 
you can uh, read the value of mutation dot type, which gives you the name of the mutation that was run, and uh, mutation dot payload will give you the value of any payload if there was in a mutation. Mutations can be payload less mutations as well. Okay, uh, and the value of state that is coming into the function. Just keep in mind that that is the state after the mutation has taken place. So this is going to run after the mutation has taken place. So you get the change state. You don't get the previous state. So if you want to prevent a mutation from happening, that is not something you can do with a method. Okay. Uh, you can reverse it maybe, <laughs> but you can't pre block uh, a mutation from happening. You just get to know that it has happened and you can do something else after that. Okay. Uh, if you need a plugin to block a mutation, probably you have not written your UX uh, store properly. Um, One thing to keep in mind is that, uh, like uh, I said, you can commit further mutations from here. That would result into this function running again. So you need to filter my the you need to not run it again for the my mutation being run because that's a mutation and it will again trigger this event. Uh, keep in mind that if uh, you are uh, on strict mode, that when you are developing, usually people turn on strict mode for uh, Vue.js. So changing objects inside the state directly, state dot x equal to y or Placing the state object itself, the reference to that, uh, those things uh, do not work in the strict mode, and uh, that's why, like, if you don't use strict mode, you might end up writing like this, and sometimes it might work, but sometimes you will lose reactivity to your store if you write like this. So it's best that you have strict mode turned on, and when you build your plugins, you automatically will end up creating mutations for making changes and do it via the proper route itself. Okay. Uh, okay. So what plugin do we build? Um, Remember this tweet? Anybody has seen this tweet? It got very popular recently. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so years of presenting at conferences has taught me not to actually do a live demo. So I did the demo ten uh, an hour hour back, and I have just recorded it. So, um, let's see. So we're gonna make a plugin called CSS Debug. Okay, and uh, I don't type that fast, that's 2x. Um, <laughs> and uh, we are going to export a function. That function is going to have the view object inside it. I'm going to create a mixin. This is going to be a global mixin. So, what I will do is the elements are mounted. And uh, we have published this uh, module already. You can install uh, view plugin CSS debug. and Give all your CSS in your uh, code. Uh, we will see that live happening. But before that, how about we take this evil approach to UX plugins as well? Uh, so uh, I, I don't know. Uh, this okay. So let's make a UX plugin. So it's called UX plugin store flash. And uh, again, this is also 2x. Uh, so it's a little getting stuck a bit. Uh, sorry for that. So every time there is a mutation, the background is going to go red for 100 milliseconds. Okay. And uh, I've published that as well. Um, let's see. So, so I actually have a project. Uh, the size a bit. So there's this is uh, a website called realworld.io. It's a it's a copy of uh, Medium. You can build it using any framework just to you know brush your skills for framework. I really love that project to try things out. Uh, let's go to this website. So yeah, that's how it looks like. Uh, it's it's a Medium clone. There are articles and there are trash articles, of course. Uh, so let's do is uh, we'll go to Index and uh, what did we name our uh, okay, let's just, uh, import right and uh, let's do cool. uh, about the store one we're gonna import that as well import uh, store flash uh, from uh, and we'll add that into plugins here. Cool. 
do we have uh, okay let's change the state <laughs> so you can debug your entire app like this i mean of course uh, you guys have better ideas of making plugins but i just wanted to show something that you can really quickly build with one line uh, js files uh, back to my presentation So, just for your information, I do use Nano. I don't use Vim because I'm not a 10x engineer. I, 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 and I'm not even a 2x engineer. I just play my videos in 2x. Okay. Uh, okay. So, coming to uh, some of the important aspects of when to make plugins. Now, this is uh, really important that you should not just keep on building plugins just because you know how to build a plugin. Uh, I have built a few plugins which like these two ones, nobody uses them because. <laughs> uh, so, uh, should we make a mix in and we put it into a plugin and we uh, make the only way to use it is via the plugin or can we uh, actually make the mix in separately available as well? That's also a question in mind. So, you just decide whether uh, the functionality that you've introduced uh, makes sense only to uh, some components in your uh, project or to all components in your project and that way. Uh, or the best thing you can do is, uh, for example, the view plugin timers. If you go and take a look at the README, I export the mixin and the plugin both the modules. So you can use it as a plugin, uh, in which case it will be available on every component. You can use it as a mixin in only those components that you want as well. Okay. Uh, and we were talking about some enterprise grade projects. You get 400, 500 view files in some places. Should not uh, introduce mixins into them because that function is going to get run uh, every time. There's a big runtime cost to incur. Um, should you make a plugin or should you just uh, create a function and export it as an NPM module? Now that also is something that we need to think of. And uh, what you have built, does it make sense only in the view construct of things? Or what you have built uh, is something that is very general to web development in nature? And I think this is a very deeper question is that uh, a lot of times when we are building an uh, app with a framework, we forget that we are just doing web development. The DOM is still there, JavaScript is still there. Okay, uh, world has not crashed. So. Sometimes you just make something really generic. It can be a function you can import, just a simple NPM module. You don't need to make a uh, plugin. But yeah, if it is uh, if it is related to how the view lifecycle works, or if it is related to how uh, people will uh, create filters like uh, or directives, in that case, feel free to go ahead and create a plugin. Right. Um, okay. How much time do I have? I have a bit of time. Uh, so. So writing tests for your plugins. So now that you have built a plugin, how do you write tests for your plugins? Uh, I'll just uh, drop down to uh, the code of plugins I have. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, this is my view uh, uh, timer uh, one. So uh, thing is uh, the 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 tests that I have written uh, they uh, they are not really like how you write a test for a plugin. I think the best way to do it is uh, uh, in your plugin inside the test directory, create a sample view app which uses your plugin and then test the components of the end functionality that you need. Okay, so it's similar to that. Uh, uh, and I will just uh, go to the yeah. so uh. Created a normal timer component. Uh, it's uh, written in TypeScript though, but I think uh, hopefully it makes a bit of sense. So I have uh, just written my uh, normal test. I've used JS DOM to make uh, the DOM elements uh, available in Node.js. So I don't need to run this test on uh, Phantom or uh, something like that. It uh, runs on Node itself, and it just we just check uh, we mount the uh, timer component, and uh, the timer component is supposed to update in 200 milliseconds. So in my test, after 500 milliseconds, I just test that the value has changed, something like this. So uh, I mean, I'm not really testing my plugin itself. I'm putting my plugin into a view component and then testing that component. That's uh, you will get a very good coverage across your entire plugin. Right, wire up your test like that. Uh, I think I've written some tests for the uh, UX plugin as well. So UX plugin again uh, does uh, similar things. Uh, we have got uh, uh, created a store uh, which has some values of the number of dog barks and number of cat mews okay uh, and uh, it runs some mutations and then uh, i just uh, check if the inside the saved store 
whether the value has updated or not. Uh, again, uh, this is just simple node level test. In fact, this test does not uh, require view itself. It just use view, It just uses Vuex uh, to test it. So it just is the Vuex part of it. Um, so that's about tests. And uh, I think uh, this is very important is that when you have written a plugin, uh, about distribution. Now, when you distribute your plugin, you uh, could distribute it as uh, common JS or ESM or uh, UMD. Okay. Now, if you distribute it as only common JS, then uh, people would be able to use it only when they build their project via Vue CLI. But if they simply want to, you know, script SRC the, your module and they just want to. So, in fact, uh, if you have looked at the documentation, you can use Vue and Vuex together without using Vue CLI. You can just script src unpackage slash view, script src unpackage slash vuex, and uh, you don't even need to write view dot use vuex. The uh, CJS script automatically includes itself into view. You just need to write the lines one after the other. First import view and then import uh, vuex, and you have vuex set up already. So uh, if you look at the stats, so uh, sometime back there was an article on like whether Vue is used more or whether React is used more. And a lot of people commented on some frameworks like Vue and React is that these frameworks, a lot of people uh, do not necessarily go and install it from NPM. So the NPM stats might not be a reflection. If you go and look at the charts of JS Deliver or Unpackage, there are a lot, there are like uh, the number of uh, downloads a month are going to billions. So a lot of people do use uh, Vue uh, directly inside their browser, although that's not very good for performance, but if it is solving their purpose, your plugin could probably help those people as well. So uh, what we should do is, uh, uh, I'll give you an example of my plugins where I have written them actually in TypeScript and I have distributed them in such a way that they can be used by people who are using JS or TS and they can be used directly inside the browser or uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, the Vue CLI uh, structure. So uh, what happens is when I build my modules, uh, the dist folder, it generates a CJS folder inside which there is the common JS version of this plugin. There is a ESM folder which contains the ESM version of this plugin. And then uh, there is a UMD folder which generates the UMD version of this plugin. Finally, uh, the .d.ts files are also separately exported types. And uh, my package.json, I have uh, specified all of these things. So my main points to CJS, because when somebody is using it via node, that is what they want. Okay. Uh, my module one uh, points to the ESM one. So if somebody is using a fully ES6 uh, way of using it, uh, they will, will import it from the module one rather than from the main one. Uh, if uh, somebody uh, is using something like Bower, nobody uses it anymore, but uh, if somebody does, or if you publish it with something like JS Deliver and Package, etc. So browser, we have a remap. So if somebody tries to access disk cjs index.js, they are getting the UMD one. If somebody tries to access ESM, they still get the ESM one only. And uh, I have a uh, link to the min files for unpackage and JS deliver. So when I publish, they pick up the min files. So people can simply write unpackage.com slash Vuex persist. They don't need to specify the minified or the unminified and all of that stuff. Dot mil will pick that up. Uh, and the typings folders are also uh, specifically uh, mentioned out there. Uh, usually building something like this uh, is not as complex as you might think, distributing for all of these things. Uh, I, I have used rollup, so it's just, just define the output, the format and the target, and your source is going to be still the same. You define a format for UMD, UMD min, ESM, CJS, that's it. You get four things built. Okay. So when I'm publishing it, it's available for all the formats, uh, uh, right? Uh, most of the Vue and Vuex uh, plugins that I have built, I usually do it uh, this way. Um, finally, uh, documentation. Uh, I mean, nobody's going to use your plugin if it's not documented. And by documentation, it just does not mean like, you know, run automated JS doc. Not just that. That should be there. Okay. Uh, but uh, if you're using TypeScript, even that is not required. TS doc, etc. automatically gets generated for what arguments and function names and all of that stuff. But what's important is use the right a usage guide step by step. How do you get started with? And uh, we all being from the Vue ecosystem, I think uh, Vue has one of the best uh, getting started guides across all the frameworks. And it has been one of the reasons why a lot of beginners get attracted to Vue. So I think uh, it is on us when we add things to the ecosystem to stay true to the ethos of the ecosystem and write usage guides. And for that, we have ViewPress. So we can use ViewPress to build them. And I can show you an example of a plugin that 
page so yeah you you ex it looks exactly like all the view js documentation you have a uh, you know you can write uh, you can even highlight code somewhere like uh, yeah so which line uh, i don't know if that highlight is green or so one of the lines is darker all of that stuff i mean you can write really nice documentation using uh, vpress so definitely when you are right uh, creating a plugin do that uh, so yeah i think that's it from my side uh, that's all i had to speak about you and vpx plugins uh, you can hit me up on twitter if you want to and uh, this presentation will be available on speaker deck that's my speaker deck thank you so we can have about five questions for arnav before we break for lunch uh you specified uh, for the mute uh, for the mutations uh, like plugins for the mutation specifically i'm saying um, the mutations are mostly application specific right yeah. and uh, those existing in the plugin seem a bit uh, yeah, yeah. i wouldn't say uh, right, right. wrong so the example in the plugin uh, i just wrote mutation dot type equal to something just for an example say okay. uh, but what you can do is uh, Uh, so i'll give you an example of how vbx process works you can make the consumer of your plugin supply a list of mutations on which it is supposed to be saved okay so your plugin is at a stage where the mutation happens okay now your plugin can't know from before and when it is going to get consumed what mutations will happen so that values also you can take from the user because you can add a configuration step for your uh, plugin in that case uh, so uh, what happens is like the easiest way to use this persist plugin is uh, we can just uh, right plugins and we can add that but what i have is there are some keys in when i am constructing it there are certain extra keys so for example there is one called uh, filter so this mutation filter is a function that people can add and this uh, will basically take the mutation type as an argument and return a boolean as true or false okay. so you can add your own filter function and for those mutations you want to save your state pass those those you don't want to so those things you can add as configurations right but yeah your plugin should not be opinionated on <laughs> what yeah. people are doing it's true any other questions yeah uh, so when you are building plugins and shipping some view components yeah. so what you suggest you should ship dot view files or bundled files uh okay so uh that's a good question i think we had a discussion about that uh, some time back also so uh, i think some places uh, what i do is uh, i don't know about view plus bundled but uh, i do uh, ship both the es6 and the es5 version usually and uh, the umd builds they are in es5 and uh, the cjs ones and the esm ones they are in es6 and uh, i usually write a line inside my readme that you know you have to turn on transpile dependencies for this module so because i feel that uh, there are a lot of projects which uh, are not transpiling down to es5 so if they use the es6 version of my plugin they will save a bit on the uh, bundle size uh, uh, like those uh, polyfills will not get added for them but there are a lot of people who are transpiling their project to es5 uh, and when they are transpiling their entire project to es5 why not transpile my module as well along with that so that's like what i uh, feel but uh, i have uh, not i i have not shipped dot view files directly i have at least converted them to js because uh, i mean uh, i did that with one of my plugins and a lot of people came up with problems like they were not able to compile that and all of those issues were there so dot view files directly i have not shipped it so uh, mutating uh, like adding a global mix in uh, basically if your plugin is adding a global mix in it affects all the co uh, components yeah. and it can basically degrade the performance of that yeah. application so should we use global mix in or if we are using global mix in what should we do to convey that it can be it what it can do okay uh, so i think uh, like i said uh, i prefer doing is uh, having it in the readme itself is that uh, you can Use uh, it's written here. So, generally, document that you 
know you can use the mixin separately in a independent uh, component as well and uh, uh, i think uh, it is kind of imperative for me i should add a line there that use it in every one of them then you can cut the cost for just that mixin function to just simply be that key to be picked up in property and run even if it is empty for a lot of those plugins so that is there uh, i uh, in my experience in all the plugins that i have used there is rarely i have found a plugin which is supposed to be run on every usually uh, there are very specific cases and you need to run them on certain kinds of components only because uh, when you have build a project like the gitlab one was being shown there are going to be at any point of time on the screen there might be 2000 3000 components itself which are entered and there is hardly going to be any functionality that is needed for all those 2000 components at the same time uh, and if there is then probably those kind of things get added to vue js itself over time so in that sense i think uh, putting a mixer inside a plugin is not really one of the best use cases uh, probably adding a, a transition or adding a filter those kind of things are more valid use cases of building a plugin uh, so uh, what keywords or tags you suggest for plugins on npm and github so that they are visible and discoverable when you search them uh, so i mean i don't know i haven't really gotten level of doing seo for uh, plugins yet <laughs> uh, i mean i'm just happy one of them gets used a lot and uh, there are already enough uh, github issues to keep up with along with my day job but uh, I, i mean i just follow one thing is i write them in the format of view hyphen plugin hyphen name of the plugin and view x hyphen plugin hyphen name of plugin something like that uh, that's usually the format that i prefer and in tags i just write view plugin and then uh, sometimes like uh, Like timer, like right timer and time pulse and those kind of things, but I think not have not given a lot of thought to <laughs> search on npm. I think does not really work very well anyway. <laughs> 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 